Hey guys, my name's Gavin, welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about sample making, how I make my samples, how I post-process them, and edit them to make them sound a little bit more vinyl. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't already at GavinHadley underscore, feel free to DM me. I'm always looking for new people to work with. And let's get into the video, guys, enjoy. Okay, so I'm gonna start here by just playing the sample, all of the four different pieces that I have out, uh, what I came up with when I quickly recorded. So I'm going to start to play all of them at the same time. Oh my f***ing god, Cleo. Get out of my setup. Get out of my sight. Get out of my sight. Alright, so since this is a post-processing tutorial, I'm going to get right into it start talking about post-processing. So there's nothing on any of these sounds. I'm just gonna start one sound at a time and I'm gonna start with the guitar. So this is what the guitar sounds like on its own. Right off the bat, I think it needs a little bit of compression. I think it needs to sound a little bit more vinyl, even though the sound was a pretty good quality sound already, but I'm gonna add a little bit more for you guys. So the Volve Compressor, um, the Good Hertz Volve Compressor is one of my favorites. I'm just gonna throw this in uh, for the first thing that we do. I might add like a little reverb, we'll see. Uh, so this is what it's gonna sound like, like with no effect. I'm gonna uh, move this comp knob up until I get a little bit more of like a distorted vinyl sound. It's like really subtle. And now I think actually I'm gonna move that up, put an EQ below everything so the low end gets taken out. This already makes it sound a little bit more vinyl because obviously there's not as much low end in the vinyl samples. Uh, but I'm gonna actually use my mouse scroll wheel here and blend it a little bit. Kind of roll out the uh, low end from the sample, makes it a little bit more smooth. Honestly, I think I really like the guitar sound already, so we're just going to leave the guitar like that. Just a little bit of compression and an EQ to get rid of some of the low end. I could throw on something like I said, so vinyl, but like I said, uh, that's probably going to be after I export all of the pieces of the loop. I'm going to go in and have like some stuff on the master channel, and that might be where that comes in handy. So for the flute, what I like doing with my flutes, um, I keep all my sounds playing. But I really like compressing the flute with that same plugin. I find that this really gives the flute a um, more tight sound. Alright, so I have that. And now I'm going to add a little bit of delay just to fill up a little bit more space. I think I'm going to set my time knob to, you can't see this, but 8 steps. And then mix this volume back. So that's, that's way too much, as you can tell. Actually, maybe I'll change this to like two steps. Yeah. And I'm mixing everything as I go. All right, so this sound, I really liked it because it's a really good quality sound, this pad is, and also it's really unique. The unique sounds give a unique feeling because you haven't heard it before. So I'm gonna add RC20 to this. Actually, I'm gonna add cassette. Uh, cassette is kind of like RC20, it's just a little bit different. And I use this um, Insight Bayside preset, and then you can hear the static super loud, so turn that all the way off. And then I turn the stability all the way up so it doesn't wobble a bunch. And I go in here, turn the randomness off so it doesn't do like random pitch bends. And you can hear already that makes it sound a little bit more like it's coming through a tape. That's like a tape emulator, that's the whole point of cassette. And now I might go in and add like another reverb to it. This Good Hertz uh, Mega Verb is a really unique reverb. It's almost like a distorted. Not I'm not gonna say distorted. It's a really aggressive reverb. It's really subtle. 
it barely even makes a difference. It's there. The thing about uh, sample making and stuff when you're adding all of these effects in the mixer is that you really don't have to do too much if you have good quality sound sounding sounds. Uh, just compression, that's really what I recommend. Um, making the sample sound a little bit more vinyl -y. and I'm going to add some effects in a little bit once we get over to the piano roll and I start laying out the sample. Uh, we're going to add some of that noise. Uh, a lot of people just use RC20, but I use uh, noise from one shots, that one shot kits people have. After that, I really like the way this sounds. I'm just really going to make sure I tuck it in the background though, so it doesn't like um, get in the way of the guitar. Actually, what I will do is open up RC20. And a lot of people don't know this, but you can use RC20 to widen stuff. Uh, I normally use Ozone plugins to widen, but you can actually use this width knob right here. I think I'm going to add a little bit more high end to the flute as well, just boosting this area over here in an EQ. Um, and I always put my EQs when I make my samples at the bottom of the chain, uh, just because it controls all of the sounds at the same time and all of the, all of the different effects that I put on. Like I'm really going, um, I'm adding a lot of effects for this tutorial just because I'm giving you guys different options. A lot of times I don't do all this, I don't do all this EQ stuff. I feel like EQ really isn't necessary. I'm just trying to do as much stuff as I can, but at the same time trying to keep it simple and not overly done, if that makes sense. And now this last sound here is a whistle like pad sound from Omnisphere. And it's pretty all over the place. It goes up and down the scale. And I did that on purpose because something that I like to do is use a reverb, just drown something out in reverb. Uh, I use the Valhalla Vintage Verb. It's really good, you can get the trial of it, and all these plugins that I'm using, or a lot of them, are trial versions. I just export stuff out before like the trial limitations run out and the sound doesn't work anymore. So this is a trial, I normally just leave it how it is. So it adds a lot more reverb to it. But then I go into an EQ, press this twice to bring up uh, this EQ, I take out, make it sound like it's underwater. And maybe to add like a little bit of movement, I might add a tremolator. Uh, I do this occasionally. A tremolator is a really good way of adding a lot more depth to your loops um, without adding like more melodies and stuff. When I do this tremolator, I'm gonna make sure that I put it at either over the EQ or under the EQ. Um, just making sure it's over the reverb because otherwise you won't really hear the tremolated effect. I'm gonna do like really slight. So like the overall volume of it is just uh, rising and ducking. So now these are the four different parts of the loop all affected. I also should have mentioned that I bounce all of the stuff out that I'm affecting. For the most part, I bounce them out to audio files just because I feel like they're a lot easier to manipulate and they give a different sound. Uh, but yeah, these are everything playing here. So what I'm going to do, re-render these out. Because if you hear when I stop it, there's reverb that drains through. I'm just going to go ahead and render all four. You'll see what I mean with the reverb in a second. Because when you're laying out the sample itself, uh, you can't have reverb like tail off into the next parts of the sample because when someone's chopping it up, it's really going to sound kind of off. So I'm going to chop off all of these tails, save my project again. If you're new to FL Studio, make sure you save your project all the time because otherwise, uh, good luck having your everything crash and you lose your project. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate this over four times because I have four different sounds. I'm not going to do any, like sometimes I do variations where I have some stuff in the sample playing or have like a halftime part. Actually, I might as well do a halftime part. So I'm going to duplicate out another one. And then this section right here will be the halftime part with everything playing. And then after that, we'll just have one sound at a time. I lay out my loops like that too. So I have one sound at a time because that really gives uh, whoever's using your loop the most options when they are using the loop because they can chop it up and rearrange it however they want. And they're not limited to just one or two uh, variations of the loop that you created. We can go ahead and add half time just on the master channel. That's fine. Oh, that sounds really cool. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so now we're gonna export all of this out into another audio file. It's really interesting how I make my loops. I like to bounce everything out a bunch of times. People like Simon Servita, I know he does that. And it's also really good to bounce melodies out so you don't have the opportunity, I guess, to go and mess with the MIDI because sometimes you can get fixated on one little thing um, and that one little thing can end up costing you a lot of time. We can mute all this, we don't need it. Uh, we are gonna keep this halftime on, otherwise, since it's on the master channel, it's gonna mess up this one. So this is what our sample sounds like right now. That's why you save your FLPs, because stuff just breaks sometimes. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you were able to learn a little bit more about sample making and different effects and stuff that you guys can put on your loops to make them sound a little bit more unique. Final comment down below what you guys would like to see next. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.